Okay, so we're going to talk about thermodynamics and biochemistry. And uh, this is going to be kind of an introduction, and we're going to get into the laws of thermodynamics, and we're going to get into uh, internal energy and enthalpy. So cells need energy, so that's why we're talking about uh, thermodynamics. Is thermodynamics is a study of the flow of energy. And so cells need energy, they use energy flow, and so that's why it's important. They need it to perform mechanical work, to maintain concentration gradients, and to make complex molecules. So, for example, when you synthesize a protein, you're making a complex molecule. When your nerve cells fire, they exchange a concentration gradients of sodium and potassium, and, uh, and, and so they need to maintain those concentration gradients with energy. And mechanical work is actually uh, done by changing concentration gradients of calcium inside of the muscles and skeletal muscles. And so all of these things require energy. All of that to say that thermodynamics is important in biochemistry. And it's imp being important, you also have to understand that uh, there are a few changes if you've taken a, a second semester of chemistry and gen chem and you learned a little thermodynamics uh, or you've taken some physics courses uh, the thermodynamics the rules in biochemistry they're all the same rules but there are some alterations to the standard equations in order to make it work for the inside of a cell and so uh, it's not going to just be your standard thermodynamic uh, lesson now, of course, uh, there are three laws of thermodynamics, and so I'm kind of doing this as if nobody's had physics or any other kind of uh, te uh, in instruction on thermodynamics. The first law is that the total energy of a system remains the same. The total energy of an isolated system, total energy of an isolated system remains constant. So... We can express that if we if we say the total energy, the change of total energy of an isolated system is going to equal zero. So we can express that mathematically. And then we, the second law of thermodynamics is uh, that the entropy of the universe constantly increases. Entropy of the universe is increasing, or the entropy of a system is always increasing unless energy is being added to it. And so the universe has no added energy. That's the first law. <laughs> the energy, the total energy is constant. And so uh, the entropy is constantly increasing. And the third law is kind of odd. It seems strange. But it's that the entropy, the entropy of a perfect crystal, the entropy of a perfect crystal at zero degrees Kelvin, at zero, and we'll say T equals zero Kelvin, uh, is, the entropy is zero. So the change of entropy equals zero at zero degrees Kelvin for a perfect crystal. Now let's see if I can state these things in a little bit easier way to understand. So the first law, the total energy of an isolated system is constant. So what is an isolated system? There are three kinds of systems. There are open systems in which you have energy. Uh, so let's say this is energy and this is matter, or this is mass. So in an open system, they can be changed around. They can exchange energy and mass. It can move in. It can move out without any hindrances. In a closed system, so I'm going to draw a close. so here's my open system, and then in a closed system, we're going to have a little pores right there. In a closed system, energy can move out, or energy can move in and out, but mass is stuck inside. So energy is exchanged, but mass isn't. And in a, an isolated system, neither energy, so the energy, the mass inside of here cannot be exchanged with the energy and mass outside of the system. So the only perfectly isolated system that we could speak of is the universe itself. 
but we've we've uh, done some things like in a calorimeter uh, where we've uh, isolated it very decently so that it's uh, the the change of energy is very very slow that it doesn't exchange energy with the outside very uh, very easily and so that's kind of an imperfect isolated system but since the only uh, the only perfectly isolated system is the universe. We say that the total energy in the universe is constant. This is the law of conservation of energy. So the first law of thermodynamics is the law of conservation of energy. And the second law, uh, the entropy of the universe is always increasing. So what is entropy? Entropy, basically, originally, it, there, someone identified that, that whenever you start at a high temperature, so we'll say this is a high temperature. The heat always flows to low temperatures, to low, uh, lower temperature areas. So heat always travels from high concentration to low concentration. And so this is interpreted uh, many different ways. And originally it was interpreted in probably some incorrect ways. Uh, but mostly now we just say that the, the uh, entropy is disorder. And so instead of identifying it strictly with temperature, entropy is identified with all disorder. And so the disorder of the universe is always increasing. And the disorder of any system is increasing unless energy is being added to it. And so this is, uh, most people will talk about entropy and they'll give the example of how clean your house is. If you don't add any work and energy to your to cleaning your house, then it will be constantly become more clustered and more messy. And the third one, uh, we're just going to leave that alone for now because it's not as important in the biochemistry. And, and it really, and in, in I'm not a physicist, I don't study thermodynamics, but really I don't think uh, the third law of thermodynamics is all that important at all because zero Kelvin is a theoretical thing that has never been achieved in a lab or an experiment. So until we can do that, um, I don't really think it's super important uh, law of thermodynamics. There is one other law of thermodynamics. It's the zeroth law. Let me write that out. Zeroth law of thermodynamics. So the zeroth law of thermodynamics and this is the, the fundamental law of thermodynamics, and, but it was actually spelled out well after the other three laws had been studied. And basically what it says is that two objects, two objects in thermal equilibrium, thermal equilibrium will have the same temperature. The same so this is the idea that if you were to take a metal spoon, and I'm going to try to draw a spoon, and you were to put it into a pot, this is my pot here, you put it into a pot of hot water, so I have, uh, have some water in here, so I'm going to put some water, if I put that into a pot of hot water and there's some fire under there, uh, if you leave it in there long enough and then you were to remove both uh, both the pan and the spoon and and record the temperature of both of those they would have the same temperature and that's going to be it for this uh, next is going to be um, taking the first law of thermodynamics and manipulating it mathematically to discover some things